It's a beautiful day in this neighborhood, a beautiful day for a neighbor. Would you be mine? Could you be mine? It's a neighborly day in this beauty wood, a neighborly day for a beauty. Would you be mine? Could you be mine? I have always wanted to have a neighbor just like you. I've always wanted to live in a neighborhood with you. So let's make the most of this beautiful day. Since we're together, we might as well say, would you be mine? Could you be mine? Won't you be my neighbor? Won't you please? Won't you please? Please won't you be my neighbor? Hi, neighbor. Glad we're together again. Do you see what I was bringing with me? Do you know what those are? They're paper cups. I have an idea. I'd like to take them to the kitchen and show you the idea. Hi, fish. Different colors of paper cups. Have you ever used a paper cup? They're the kinds of cups that, that won't break. You can build with them. Sure, you, you can make tall towers with them like this. <laughs> I thought you could. Yeah. This takes time, patience. Can make them fly around, the airplanes. Make cars moving along. I think maybe I'll make, these are a little smaller. Just make a, a building. Let's see if I try a building like this. I was thinking about this kind of building as I was coming along. That does work. There's a little closer. Maybe this would fit up there. <laughs> Do you think this might fit on the top of that? It does. Well, you'll think up ideas if you have any. One other thing that I want to show you. Here's my stone. Take three cups like this and put a little stone under this one. Now you see if you know where the stone is. Right. Where is it? Yep. Oh, there's somebody at the door. Mr. McFeely. Good day to you. Good day. Good day. I don't have delivery today. But, but I stopped by because I was wondering about this piece of sheet music. You see there are notes of music on here, no words. I found it as I was unpacking a, a delivery crate today. Hmm. And I thought that I could bring it over and you can play it on the piano. Hmm. Yeah, let's try it on the piano. I'd like to hear what it sounds like. I'd the, like to try to read music. Part of it is torn away. I hope there's enough there for you to, to play. of your wedding? Yes, and Roberta sang it beautifully that day. I'll never forget how everything looked and sounded that day. You know, many of our friends and relatives were in the church. Boy, it was sure nice to have them all there.
Berta's song was a great way to begin our wedding. I remember even now how nervous I was, but my good friend Jim Gardner was a great help to me. Betsy's sister Nan came in first. And if I remember correctly, she was carrying a big bouquet of pink roses that she grew in her own garden. My nephew Chris carried the ring, and Betsy's niece was a flower girl. Who gives this woman to be married to this man? Her mother and I do. David, do you take Betsy to be your wife? And do you promise to live with her, and to love her, and to cherish her with high... I, David, take thee, Betsy, to be my wedded wife, to have and to hold from this day forward, for better, for worse, for richer, for poorer, in sickness and in health, in joy and in sorrow, to love and to cherish. And now I, I give thee my troth. With this ring, I thee wed, pledging my constant faith and love, and with all that I am and all that I have, I honor you. With this ring, I thee wed, pledging my constant faith and love, and with all that I am and all that I have, I honor you. Now that David and Betsy have consented together in holy wedlock before God and these witnesses, by the authority given me as a minister of the church, I now declare you husband and wife. What God hath joined together, let no one put asunder. Amen. Having our friends there really meant a lot to Betsy and me. We waved goodbye to them. Off we went to begin our life together. And we've been married for 45 years. Have you always been happy? Oh, nobody's happy all the time, but Betsy and I have had a big share of happiness. 
example, some people get married and after a while they're so unhappy with each other that they don't want to be married anymore. Well, I know, and sometimes they get divorced, and that's all very sad. Well, I've got to be going now. Thank you for uh, playing the music for me. I certainly appreciated it. Well, I'm glad you stopped by, Mr. McFeely. Good day. Thanks, Thanks again. Thanks for telling us about your wedding. Oh, Mr. McFeely left so fast. As soon as we started talking about divorce, I guess that's something he doesn't like to talk about. Did you ever know any grown-ups who got married and then later they got a divorce? Well, it is something that people can talk about, and it's something important. I know a little girl and a little boy whose mother and father got a divorce, and those children cried and cried. You know why? Well, one reason was that they thought it was all their fault. But of course, it wasn't their fault. Things like weddings and having babies and buying houses and cars and getting divorces are all grown-up things. Let's do something different. There are all kinds of ways to make believe. So let's just look closely at these paper cups and think about a picnic that King Friday, Queen Sarah, and Prince Tuesday are having. And let's pretend that two new people stop by and talk with the royal family. They can have some important talk. Lovely sky, uh, good temperature. Uh, this could be a perfect picnic. <laughs> I think it is perfect. I really like it here. It could be perfect if we had flown here in a new jet plane. Oh, Friday, you have a one-track mind. One jet stream mind, Sarah. Oh. There's somebody coming. Yes, I wonder who that is. Some other picnic people, I presume. Hello. Hello. I'm Krista Jane Bacardi, and this is my daughter, Patty. Oh, we're glad to meet you, Ms. Bacardi and Patty Bacardi. Uh, will you share our picnic with us? We've already had ours, thank you. But I thought your son might like to play with Patty. Uh, would you young people like to have a few minutes play together? OK. OK. It won't be long, because we have to get back to the castle soon. So why isn't your daddy here with you? Well, my daddy's divorced from my mom. What's that mean? That means they don't live with each other anymore. You mean you don't see your daddy anymore? Oh, yes. I go and visit him, but my mom doesn't come with me. Why not? Because my mom and dad got a divorce, and... I don't think they love each other anymore, but I know my daddy loves me, and my mommy loves me, too. But they don't love each other anymore? Sometimes they used to have terrible fights. What about? All kinds of things. I'll bet it feels awful. Sometimes. But I don't think about it all the time, just sometimes. Gee. I don't think I'd like that at all. Well, I couldn't do anything about it. Time to go, Tuesday. Come along. Oh, that wasn't long at all, Friday. You didn't give them much time at all to be together. Important castle business. We must return. Oh, Friday. It was a pleasure to meet you, Miss Bacardi. I hope we'll meet again, Sarah. Well, I do too. Come along, Patty. Okay, Mom. Bye-bye, Tuesday. Bye-bye, Patty. Uh, let's move these cups into our baskets now and go. You and your hurrying, Friday. It seems you're always wanting to stop something that's fun. So that little girl's mother and daddy are divorced. That means that they're not married anymore. And she was able to tell that to Prince Tuesday. 
Did you hear how she said that her mom and dad didn't love each other anymore? But they did still love her. How do you think Prince Tuesday felt about all of that talk? He could be worried, especially if he's never heard about divorce before. Let's get the trolley this time and make believe, okay? I'll clean these up a little later. Hey, trolley. Let's make believe that Prince Tuesday is worried and he's talking with Lady Aberlin about his worry right at the castle garden in the neighborhood of make-believe. Ready to do that? I am. Neighborhood of make-believe. Hi, Charlie. Hi, Charlie. <sighs> Does the trolley ever get angry? I don't think so. Why? Well, trolley's a machine, and machines don't have feelings. Oh. That's what I want to be. What? A machine. Why is that? Because I don't want to have feelings. Are you worried about some feelings that you've been having lately? Yes, and I don't want Mom and Dad to have any feelings either. But that's what people are all about. And Prince Tuesday, I presume. Correct, Correct as, as usual, usual Daddy. Uh, have you two been playing airplanes? Oh, no, we've been building with paper cups and pretending that they were puppets. Of course, and... you could uh, pretend they were airplanes. Oh, I guess we could. Uh, you could put them end to end and fly them around. Well, like this? Something like that. Uh, but be sure they sound like a jet. Jet planes go very fast, you know. <laughs> uh, especially A and L jets. Uh, you could pretend that they are jet planes too, Prince Tuesday. I don't want to. Of course you do. Everybody wants to think about jets. I certainly do. Now, if a representative from A and L jet should come, please tell her that I will be in the A room. Naturally. 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 Farewell. 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 Daddy's talking a lot about jet planes. What does Aunt Sarah say about that? Well, she really gets angry. Speedy delivery, speedy delivery, speedy delivery. Good day, everybody. Hi, Mr. McFeely. Hi, Mr. McFeely. Prince Tuesday. Ooh, looks like you have a really fancy delivery here. Uh, I'll say it's some sort of machine for Courtney's factory. Does it have any feelings? Well, what do you mean, Prince Tuesday? Does that machine have any feelings? Well, I don't think so. It has specifications and instructions, but says nothing about feelings. So, well, why do you ask? Just wondered. Prince Tuesday and I were talking about feelings and how machines don't have feelings. Oh, I see. No, I'm sure that this doesn't have any feelings. Well, then I'd like to trade places with it. Just leave the machine here and deliver me to Corny. Oh, I couldn't do that, Prince Tuesday. You'll never be a machine. Even if I don't want to have any feelings? No, you'll always be a person, and persons have feelings, and that's the way it is. Well, I don't mind having good feelings, but I don't like the bad ones. Well, I know how you feel, young man, but there's one thing I'd like to tell you. What is that? I'm sure glad to know you. Why? Because if you're concerned about feelings, you're growing up to be somebody who cares about people. But I don't like people to be mad at each other to come in Tuesday. Okay, Mother. See you all later. Bye, Prince Tuesday. Bye, bye. Tuesday. We'll talk some more later. Children are certainly complicated, aren't they, Lady Aberlin? We all are, Mr. McFeely. Well, I guess you're right. Uh, say, Lady Aberlin, would you like to uh, help me with my delivery? Well, I'll make it for you if you like. Oh, that'd be fine. I have a lot of work to do today, and all you, that you need to do is get uh, Courtney to sign the receipt right here, and I'll just pick it up from you later, all righty? I'll be glad to. Oh, and don't forget to say speedy delivery, all righty? Oh, good. I, I'd like that. I, I can do that. Speedy delivery. Uh, speedy delivery one more time. Speedy delivery. Oh, just fine, just fine. Thanks, Lady Aberlin. Bye-bye. See welcome. you around the campus. Bye. Specifications and instructions.
Oh, I say there, Lady Aberlin. Lady Elaine, where are you? Over here, dear. Where? Here. Oh, you startled me. <laughs> what is this you've got here? Well, it's a delivery for Corny. Hmm, looks like a new machine. I guess so. Do you suppose it's something for his rocking chairs? I don't know. Well, uh, why don't you open that envelope and see? Yeah. Well, because it's not mine. Well, it's right there in front of you. I know, but Mr. McFeely asked me to deliver the whole thing, the machine and the envelope, just to Corny. Uh, just one look, dear. Lady Elaine, it's not ours. Spoil sport. Corny wants us to know Corny. what it is. Corny, tell us. Cornflake. Corny, Cornflake, especially. Especially. Well, if it's not two women with lady names. <laughs> Beauty delivery, Corny. And everybody's wondering what it is. Uh, well, thank you very much for bringing it. I've been uh, waiting for this for quite a while now. And everybody's wondering uh, what it is. Uh, Mr. McFeely wanted you to sign this receipt, Corny. Well, fine, I'll be glad to. Cornflake especially. Thank you. <laughs> and everybody's wondering what it is. Uh, well, it's a new machine. Uh, just thought I'd make something different for a change. You're always manufacturing things, aren't you, Corny? Uh, I like to make things. <laughs> everybody's wondering uh, what you're going to make with this new thing. I mean, uh, we could just look inside that envelope. <laughs> I'm just not ready to tell yet, Lady Elaine. How about a hint, dear? I'll tell you when I'm ready. Well, I hope that's soon. Toot toot. It's hard for some people to wait. That's right, but it's a mighty important thing to learn. I'll say. Oh, I'm so glad that this has come. I just want to start to work on it right away. Oh, yes. to know what's going to happen here and use this new machine. It is hard to wait to find out what's inside something. But when it isn't ours, we just have to wait. I mean, that machine and that envelope certainly were not for anybody except Corny. So Lady Elaine and Lady Aberlin were not supposed to look inside of it. When something belongs to somebody else, it's theirs to do with what they choose. Hi, fish. A little food for you. Prince Tuesday said he'd like to be a machine and not have any feelings. But when you're born, you're a person. You're not a machine. Machines just do the same things over and over and over again. But when you're a person, you can grow and change and feel. Sometimes you feel like holding your pillow all night long. Sometimes you hug your teddy bear tightly. He's old, but he's still strong. And sometimes you want to snuggle up closely with your own mom and dad. At night, you even need the light sometimes. But that's not bad. Please don't think it's funny when you want an extra kiss. There are lots and lots of people who sometimes feel like this. Please don't think it's funny when you want the ones you miss. There are lots and lots of people who sometimes feel like this. Do you ever feel as if you'd like to hold your pillow at nighttime or hug your teddy bear tightly? 
Ever feels if you'd like an extra kiss? There are a lot of people who do. It's still here. Now, where is it? Right. It's time to clean up. Get all my paper cups together. That's what you do when you finish playing. We'll have more time to think and talk about important things tomorrow. That gives me a good feeling. It's such a good feeling to know you're alive. It's such a happy feeling. You're growing inside. And when you wake up ready to say, I think I'll make a snappy new day. It's such a good feeling, a very good feeling. The feeling you know that I'll be back when the day is new. And I'll have more ideas for you. And you'll have things you'll want to talk about. I will, too. You always make each day such a special day. You know how, by just your being you. There's only one person in the whole world like you. And people can like you just the way you are. The people who gave the money to make Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood are the people of this and other public television stations and the Sears Roebuck Foundation. Giant Eagle is truly proud to be a sponsor of quality children's programming because we believe that education is the key ingredient in a strong and healthy community. Giant Eagle. Hey, George. George! Join Curious George for a whole new season of fun. New adventures, new places, and exciting new friends. Hit it, Marco. Watch Curious George on PBS Kids. Tune in weekday mornings at 8 on WOSU. The whole earth is big. Like, go to different places, look everywhere, find stuff. It's fun. You have to bring your safari cameras to take pictures of the sa safari things. You need to learn how to explore the world. PBS Kids, get ready to take off. Straight ahead. To see what bees, lions, and hummingbirds are really up to. Just don't get stuck in any goo. Hmm. Tune in weekday mornings at 8.30 on WOSU. Coming up on Guardians of the Core, Alex finds the Guardians of the Core guidebook. Do, re, do. Knock it off. Alex, what did you do? Um, but when he isn't careful with the phrases, the core becomes a jukebox, making everyone sing and dance. I blame Alex, he was messing around with the core. Well, Alex and Zoe stopped the core's constant music.